Hello everyone, Crydex here. Welcome back to our Factorio Space Age playthrough. We're having a good time today on Gleba, despite what other people may have experienced on Gleba. Uh, we're enjoying it. <laughs> Granted, it's our third planet, so we were a little bit more prepared for all of the chaos that's here. Um, messed with a couple things. One thing we did is we added a thing that grabs spoilage off the end of the belt. And that's kind of because when this backs up with Bioflux, the Bioflux lasts for two hours. Um, but the stuff that's right here only lasts for a couple minutes. And so the Bioflux can back up for a little bit longer. And all that to say that I could also just not have this priority left. I could just have the loop passing by these and that would probably be fine too. Um, but... I'm actually not sure. Do I need more bioflux? Why is the bioflux not backing up? That's actually kind of weird. Anyway, uh, and then we've got nutrients being made here. I added a condition so that this guy, which has a stack size of one, I reduced that down, will only insert bioflux to make nutrients if this whole string is empty. I'm reading the whole belt contents. And that keeps the nutrients feeding the iron and copper bacteria fresher. So that's nice. Um, so then that that overall keeps these nutrients fresher for the the time that these things need to run. And then that, by having fresher nutrients, will end up creating fresher bacteria because it goes off of the... Actually, wait, what? Oh, no, the bacteria just is always getting created at 100% despite the input bacteria being at 50%. So that's nice. Um, there's an iron ore on that belt, but I think it's just because it never grabs the last one. Like the way the inserter logic grabs stuff. So we'll see if this continues to run. It's been running so far, um, the only way I could make this better is to have each one loop into its own self. I don't even know how I would do that bell-wise, but... But yeah, with the one-minute timer, I think we're just... It's lasting long enough. And then this, theoretically, should never back up, so this should just run constantly forever. And these each use one bioflux a second, so we're using about four bioflux a second for all that. Um, in terms of nutrients, these run on... A nutrient is 2 megajoules, so they're running on like 2 point... Or 1.25-ish. That's about 5 nutrients a second. Which, in terms of bioflux, is like... What? One, one bioflux a second? A little less? So... I'm actually confused why bioflux isn't big. Because these are not running anywhere close to full time because I do not have enough Umako mash. So once again, I will add another speed module into this to make it go faster. Um, I do fear that we don't have enough Umako production for that. So... I guess that means we need... Wow, look at all these eggs in my inventory. I went hunting for some pentapods. Um, and kind of forgot. Let's get rid of all that. That was about to be another jump scare. And we'll just make sure we're prepared. How's that? <laughs> How close are these, actually? One minute? Wow, that was very close. Very close to being a jump scare. Um, anyway, so what was I just doing? Oh, yeah, I, I need to make more of the, the landfilly stuff. So the landfilly stuff is just nutrients, seeds, and landfill. Okay. Where's it 
good spot. Maybe right here. And... Alright, let's watch. Let us watch. for a second. Oh, wow. Those were bigger, um... I guess they're the big premature Wriggler Pentapods. They're not just... They ain't just regular old Wrigglers. Alright, let's burn them. Incinerate them. Oh, and then the recycler stuff. I forgot to show you guys that. So basically, we are recycling um extra iron and copper so that that keeps getting destroyed so we brought in some recyclers from Fulgora and just on the Derpamu we just sent it to Fulgora to grab some and then back and so that way essentially whenever we have more than 2,000 iron ore or 2,000 iron, uh, copper it just gets destroyed now, what I probably could do is put quality in these and set it up so that we only, you know, we start, uh, energy being gone. Now, there's an interesting thing. Wait, what? What was that about? Oh. Wait. What just happened with all the lasers? That was weird. Um, I don't know what that was. Because we put all the eggs in the burner, so... Eggs on the belt expired? <gasps> they did! Wait, no, no they didn't. This should be running. <gasps> oh, I cut off the water! Oh, oh. Oh, oh, got it. That water supply was doing multiple things. Okay, well. That should fix that. Whoopsies. All right, those have a minute left. I'm gonna take out most of them and burn them. Uh, we should be okay. Because it produces new ones at full spoilage. Or full freshness, I should say. So we should be fine now. Alright, there we go. So the egg loop is safe. Um. Did I just change the side of the belt it's going to be on? I think I did. Yep, I did. Alright. Careful handling eggs. There's a reason we have those laser turrets there. Anyway, uh, back to Yumako Mesh. Yeah, I was worried about that correctly. So we need to make more of this stuff. And... Quest, bunch of those. And we only enable uh, what's the, the easiest way to do it? I mean at this point I I just have enough seeds, so I don't think I need to worry about it. No no no, I do need to worry about it. This is only connect or enabled if the seeds in the network are greater than 50. And this one is similar. Jelly nut. This is only enabled if jelly nut seeds are greater than 50. And 
And what is this stack to? A hundred, so that's probably fine for now. Now we're gonna get spoilage coming in here because these are always being fed with nutrients. Which is gonna be a big waste of nutrients. So we need a way... So we're going up to a thousand, so we want this inserter to only run if Mako soil is less than a thousand. Um, and similarly here, we only run if jelly nut soil is less than a thousand. Otherwise, we're just going to be wasting a lot of nutrients. Okay. I just made you realize something. You can improve iron ore quality on Glaba with recyclers. Yeah. Now, the thing I don't know is if you can... What happens if you put a quality mod in? People gotta know. Um, I assume you can get some uncommon. Iron bacteria. Right? I mean... Oh, the speed is canceling out the quality. There's enough to actually get some. Does higher quality ore smelt into higher quality plates? Yes, yes it does. It indeed it does. Maybe we haven't done 50 seconds yet. Hmm. It is annoying. There are certain things that you can't get higher quality of. And it should really tell you if... Like fluids, for example. You know, and it still allows you to put quality modules into the building, even when the thing that the building's making can't do quality. And I feel like it should tell you when that happens. Like, is there no such thing as higher quality bacteria? It has a spoil time, though. It spoils more slowly at higher quality, so this should be working. But at this point... This thing's made a lot of bacteria without making a single uncommon. So that feels wrong. That feels wrong. And I, yes, I know about the speed reducing quality, but... Oh, there it is. It did finally work. Okay. So there's uncommon... Iron bacteria. Which isn't filtered properly of how this works, which is doubly annoying. Um, so, definitely don't want that to keep going that way, but it is an option, it seems. Yeah, I really think it's weird that you can't filter like, iron bacteria of any quality. Oh, you can't. Wait, no. Can you? So where is it that you can't do this? Okay, you can do any quality in a... Is it in a... What was it that I was trying to do? Maybe logistic slots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It was, it was for, like, conditions on a filter kind of thing. Like this. This is where I wanted to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. So yeah, filter filtering of splitters works the way you want it to, but actually setting conditions and stuff doesn't. 
Okay, anyway, so there's that figured out. This seems to be running stable. Uh, this has been running for a while now. The amount of bioflux might be a bit questionable. I might need, honestly, more inserters here. These require a lot of items per second, so... And then... Finally... The Yumako... We we're gonna look at grabbing some more soil. And setting up another... Another one of these bad boys. Goes to there. What if I just put the other one here? Let it collect all the crap. I guess I can help it out. And then we want soil. Boom, boom, boom. Seeds. And then I'm going to set the same conditions where it only runs if there's less than 300 on the belt. Okay. Cool. So there we have it. That should be more than enough trees. Because uh, that's like doubling. So if anything, we're going to run out of jelly nuts now. Um, so let's grab some more of that soil. Also feeding a lot of spoilage into these. Um, yeah, that's fine, I guess. Where's our anti-spoilage? Uh, let's see. All right, so we can get a little bit more jelly nuts over here. Space for a lot more. have less than 100, but maybe we should go for less than, like, 200. Have I been attacked here yet? Not really. I went... I, there weren't a ton of enemies, and I ran around um, about an hour ago and just took out little bases that were kind of in the vicinity, so we're pretty safe for a while. What I don't know is if uh, Glabians, Glabians? Uh, expand. I, I don't know. I would actually like an answer on that um, rather than just wondering for the rest of my life what happens. So if anyone knows if for sure one way or the other, no assumptions here. Only only say if you know for certain. But. Because I don't. Uh, anyway, so that's good. I think, I think things are pretty happy for now. They do expand, Danger says. Oh yeah, I, my own inventory attacked me. Yes. 
but <laughs> but apart from that, apart from that, um, I, what's going on with landfill here? I'm so confused. I have like a billion landfill. Uh, oh, I don't have enough seeds. I see. I see the problem. <laughs> um, the way you just said Jelly Nut was the most Jack Black voice. Uh, well, I love Jack Black, so I'll take it. Jelly Nut. Uh, what is going on in here? Wow, spoilage. Um... That must have been from before, I think. Pretty sure. Uh, not totally sure, though. But now we have a blacklist on spoilage, so this shouldn't be able to get any spoilage in it. Unless the one outputting can't go fast enough. Which I guess is possible. In which case... It needs to output faster. In fact, that does seem to be what's happening. Building is too fast for its own good. Okay, um... Which means, thusly, I must have two inserters. Uh, but that's on the wrong side of the belt. Does the side of the belt matter? No, it's being side-loaded on both. Uh, but it kind of matters because otherwise, if one side's getting preferred used over the other, the other one turns into spoilage. So, I'll do it like that. Yeah, I don't know if I like that Gleba enemies... I don't know. I think Gleba's already hard enough. <laughs> Is it really necessary that it's also the only planet where enemies expand into your territory and attack you? So you, you, you have to do it like Navis, where you build an actual perimeter? Like, that's kind of annoying. And there's not even a button that just tells you what's producing... Like, what's actually going to get attacked? I don't know. It, it, at this point, I feel like I'm just going to end up with a basic wall blueprint, just like I did on Navis. Like, that feels really boring. But I don't... I don't know of a much simpler way to do it. Okay, so uh, we're getting too many jelly nuts here. Why is this... Why is this guy still running? Oh, I didn't copy the condition. Well, that'll do it. That'll do it. You can look in pollution production. That's a good point. So according to this, the only thing that produces the spores is the towers and the trees. None of my processing. So basically, I just need laser circles around my tree stuff, and I would be okay, technically, if I had enough lasers. I know the enemies have laser resistance, but I also have a lot of laser damage, so I'd be okay for a while with just that. Um, now, I really need this to be backing up, and it's not. So what's going on here? Is it these long inserters are too slow? Like, what's the problem? Not enough Imako. Uh, we can't speed that up again, I guess. At some point, we're gonna reach the limit of this chest and this inserter. <sighs> Which is why we need stacking! this inserter to, like, chill out a little bit. Or... Get me out. Why do I even need a chest? 
Um, let me just do the seeds in a different one. Playlist. Okay. That's a bit more Yumako per second. Yumako. We're steady at 879 a minute. What are we now? Wait, no, I was steady at 1.1 thousand a minute. I guess I, no, I, yeah, this is the new rate. Okay. So that's a good boost. Um, <laughs> can confirm they definitely go after the tree farms. Good to know, good to know. I think I'm safe for a while. I mean, they could expand here in a bit, but I'm not super worried about it. Um, okay, there we go. Bioflux is backed up. Good, good, good. But I think we're still using the Bioflux fast enough that I don't need to worry about the spoilage of Bioflux. Okay, so all of that being done, um, I did test, I don't remember, did I do this on screen? We did test if quality works on these and it does. Um, okay, so now it's time to make some foundries to finally get iron and copper plates and steel and stuff. So, we can now, we can make all the regular pollution we want, which is kind of funny. Landfill all this. Overgrowth Yumako soil is needed to fill that. Okay, but you can still... Wait, what? Oh, there we go. Okay. Weird. You have to, like... I don't know exactly what's going on. Um, as long as I can build on it, I don't care. So then, foundries... For iron and for copper. I don't think I'm going to need a lot. And we will just request. And we'll fully prod this because I want to make mainly because of the calcite. I want to make that go as far as possible. Um, let's see. So if we do copper there, iron here. And the calcite here. Calcite 50 should be Fine, yeah, I mean, uh, let's see with a few beacons what things look like here. Okay, that's perfectly balanced, as all things should be. And rate-wise, we've got... 0.52... About two calcite a second. Total. All right. Uh, inserters. Okay, so now we route copper down here. Over. All right, there we go. Got the Moltens. And now we just need to make all the various things from the Moltens. So, copper plate and copper cable.
And I'm just going to use logistics bots for all the basics here. You might try Glaba first to see how hard it is. That sounds like certainly an option you could you could do. <laughs> it's uh, Glaba's, Glaba's a vibe. I think what's tricky about it is you just... Everything has to work perfectly. It, like, it does not accept mistakes. One mistake sets the whole thing equal to spoilage, and then you have to go around fixing it. And I think that's what makes it a lot harder, is the the debugging, despoiling, requires a lot of extra work compared to how most of Factorio tends to feel, which is more chill. And then on top of that, you actually have enemies that might attack you, which is also not chill. Um, so there's a few tricky pieces to it. So we'll do an iron, uh, all the basic iron things. And I probably should do one for concrete. I will need one for LDS eventually. Um, obviously that won't be for a while. Because I still need plastic for that, which we make from Bioflux and something else. Uh, we also need water here, so let's see if we can just plop a offshore pump somewhere. Oh, that's convenient. There's water. Okay. Craft a few more chests here, and then we're going to need to start setting up our basic bot mall stuff for everything. Oh no, we're out of substations. Okay, good thing we're getting all this set up. <laughs> we're out of everything, all right. Get that going. Are we out of power? Oh yeah, we're out of power. Wow, I kind of forgot about how much power these bad boys use. Um, let's opt for some efficiency here. This is where I kind of wish I had uncommon beacons because uh, they use less power and have an even stronger effectiveness. So let's see, these are now using about five megawatts a piece when they have the productivity modules. Okay, that should be okay. We can handle that. Um, I am going to need copper plates, though, but the good news is we have copper plates being produced now. So... We should be able to... get a lot more power. Oh, right. With heat, I need heat pipes. I'm going to have to bring this along. Doing Gleba first, Gleba, has one huge advantage over doing any other planet. Well, what is it? Don't leave us hanging. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of what it could be. You get epic quality on I mean, obviously the advantage is that you get all the things unlocked that come from Gleba. Like, that's the obvious answer. Okay, that's that's what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> so all the things you get from Gleba, you, you already have. Yes, biolabs are great. But, like, so are electromagnetic plants, and so are foundries. So I, it's hard to... Even though, yes, technically, making all your researches cheaper is nice, is it really that hard to make the amount of packs that Vanilla is asking for in the first place? Not really. So it, it, it's kind of it's kind of hard to argue for Gleba first, to be honest. That doesn't make it wrong. It's just it certainly isn't like oh, there's no question about it. Like I think Vulcanus first is probably still the kind of obvious choice, to be honest. Um. Now, the temperature on these is going down, but that's probably because I just built all this new heat stuff. We need to watch it for a minute to see if it stays stable. Uh, let's see. Five 
600. I think we're staying stable. Because one of these can run four heat exchangers. So as long as one of these is running constantly, we technically don't need two. Um, we do need more power than this, however. I gotta keep handcrafting these, apparently. I guess if I set up a few more efficiency modules, I'll make myself a little happier as well. Okay. We're almost, almost there. But yeah, I fear we're actually going to need some more processing of stuff here. Oh, and why are we not getting an... What the... Uh-oh. Uh oh, SpaghettiOs! I deleted my planting of that one for some reason. Okay, I freaked out. I thought we were like out of seeds or something. We're okay. We're okay, we just deleted the requester chest. Okay, so get all that planted. Now, Jelly Nut could be a good fuel. So what I might do is have some sort of enabling based on a radar signal. Um, and then we'll bring, cause Jelly Nut is what? Yeah, 10 megajoules a piece. So like Jelly Nut's a serious fuel. Um, but the problem is, we'll run out of seeds if we use too many jelly nuts. So instead we should use the jelly, right? No, that does reduce the fuel value. Interesting. Though you get 50% productivity, so you go from 10 megajoule to six megajoules. It's not terrible. Because I don't want to run out of seeds. But it's... Okay. Don't worry. I, I have a thought here. We're we are having thoughts. Whether or not they're good ones, I don't know. Um, but basically, we'll come over here. And... Of course, we need nutrients for this, which is doubly annoying. Um, I really wish you could make nutrients from jelly. Wonder, is there a way to make an on-demand Everything is dead. Um. Oh, jeez, 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 jeez. We've got to fix this right away. Need one more heat pipe. Yeah, there are a couple options. We could say if we have enough seeds, like go ahead and uh, burn the jelly nut itself. We could say. Let's just make both of these run for a minute. I should actually get things running again. Um, okay. 
Um, but we could also say if... Uh, let's see. Yeah, so the plan is to process jelly nuts over here. And we'll get... We're losing a tiny bit of fuel value to get the seeds back. So to be perfectly efficient, you would have some condition where you just wouldn't process it. Um, but this is fine. Anyway, what, what, what I'm doing over here is reading the requests. So this reads the unsatisfied requests. So this is going to insert Bioflux if... It'll whitelist Bioflux, and it has a condition. And basically says if the Bioflux, it's reading the request. Oh, no, here's a question. If it's reading a request, does it give a negative or a positive? Uh, that's what I don't know the answer to. The answer is... Um... Positive. So it reads the requests as a positive signal. So if Bioflux is greater than zero, we put some Bioflux into the provider. And this way, we won't ever put Bioflux in that we're not actually requesting. I guess there's a couple extras. Um, how would we... We would have to read the hand contents and add that. So it doesn't add too many. Then it'll add it into its own request. We would need to subtract its own hand contents, but then that'll be one tick delayed. It's not, it's not worth the complication. Um, so we do that, and now we can access some amount of Bioflux anywhere. And of course, now I need some eggies. A few bio chambers. I'm also not making circuits anywhere, so we're gonna run out of those eventually, but for now I'm fine. Um, so the thought here is that we're going to request some Bioflux to make the nutrients to run bio chambers that process the jelly nuts into jelly, but only when we need nutrients. gonna be I don't really know how any of this works anymore I also like to make more heating towers. Ooh, so much going on. All right, I'm not making concrete. That could be problematic, by the way. I need to make stone brick. We're also not making plastic. We're not making circuits of any kind. Um, I can at least make a couple of these to automate some stone brick now. Grab water from the end, so that's not bothering me anymore. Okay. Literally 
the outer pipes. Alright, so water's there. Um, power's not disconnected by doing that. Let's make sure that all stays connected. Okay, so that's done. Now we need to figure this out, which is some sort of... Um, yeah, we do have more bio labs. Um, some sort of nutrient from bioflux. Make those. It's fine if we end up with spoilage in these. Um, and then we have a requester here that's only enabled if... Maybe we read the contents of these guys. And of this one. And of this. So all of those contents put together is going to be... No, no, no. This is not going to have any nutrients in it. Um... So here we enable... <laughs> What's up, Dave? Were you gone? <laughs> you do exist, I can confirm. Uh, so we enable this... based on nutrients. So if nutrients... I mean, all of that is less than 100, we enable it to request... five... four bioflux. That's it. I know that doesn't sound like a lot. Kind of forgot about eating this one with nutrients. Oh, that's annoying. Okay. Uh, how are we going to keep this guy fed with his own nutrients? Hmm. I mean, surely there's a hundred ways to skin this cat, but what am I actually going to do? A chest? Put things in a chest? Having double wide chest is also kind of annoying. Having a double wide chest that you could insert into and take from would be very nice. Um, but we cannot do that. So that's a thing. <laughs> no, 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 nobody's skinning cats. We're skinning uh, pentapods here. Good news is I think we have enough heat production for now. Um, my. All right, so many things to do. Let's set up now a little bit of smelting of stone brick just to say we did it. I mean, we're going to need concrete for various buildings, so that's fine. Um, let that fill up. This stone patch is lasting a long time. Um, let's look at our... Oh, uh, it doesn't show me the... So we've produced 330,000. But how much have we actually consumed from the ground? Well, whatever... 
Yeah, so we've only used like 100k, but we've made that much. Um, anyway. Yeah, how do we solve this problem? Because these nutrients are about to spoil, and I can't do nothing about it. So, the spoilage... Could be turned back into nutrients to then kickstart this building. Potentially getting into the weeds here. Um, let's start with a spoilage extractor. And then we put that into a chest. And then if use a car. I, I thought about a wagon, train wagon, but I, I find that janky, and I really, really don't like doing that. Like, it actively is frustrating to me. I really hate that method. Um, you know what I think we can do is just get rid of spoilage. Um, what's going on here? Behemoth fighters are a little, a little too aggressive. Um, so instead, what we'll do is we'll set this up to only extract if spoilage is greater than, I don't know, 1,000. And we'll get rid of it. Oh, these need to go into that chest as well is the problem. Um, so these are going to end up with spoilage. So all the spoilage ends up there, we get rid of extra, and then this guy and this guy run, and this makes uh, nutrients for spoilage. So then we can just say you only run if, no, we're going to need you to set uh, on a red wire. The so green wire is all the buildings, here we just want red wire. If the nutrients inside the building less than a hundred, less than ten, and fire it up equal to zero. So that means once once everything's spoiled, we need to kickstart it again. So we eat some spoilage, feed from here even funnier is that this thing itself can end up with spoilage because it can make nutrients that then sit there and spoil um so yeah that's a just crazy mess crazy things i mean and people wonder why gleba gets the hate this is why my friends this is why okay now why are we sending so many jelly nuts over here also, the seeds. I'm completely forgetting about filtering off the seeds here. <sighs> Jelly nut seeds. Okay. So we just burned a lot of Jelly nut seeds is what happened. And then finally, we want to only... Like right now we're just splitting 50-50. need to be like priority to the left this is just for extra power I guess if we're burning it all it's okay I don't know you know what maybe it's fine maybe we'll set this to 250 And remember, that's measuring the jelly nut on all the belts for this one. <laughs> unspoiled start. Yes. Well, it was an unspoiled start. I still have no idea what to expect for, a, you know, Aquilo and still some of the Gleba stuff. I haven't even started making science packs. Um, 
Is that what's next? Like, what even is next? Okay, we can make efficiency threes. That just needs spoilage. We can make carbon fiber. Tree seedlings. So we can do tree seeds on Malvis. Do the captivity research. Yeah, so these are just all the Gleba results. Oh, if we bring calcite, we can... Oh my. Oh, it gets complicated. Okay, cool. More complication on space, as if we needed that. Plastic bar productivity, rocket fuel productivity. The character health. And I guess that's it. And then a few other things we haven't unlocked yet. You were holding off on saying that one? Which one? The plastic bar productivity? Or... Okay, so it's just Bioflux and Pentapod eggs to make the, the science packs, by the way. Oh, the asteroid thing. I would argue the Vulcanus one is better than this. Oh, there's also just asteroid productivity, which is interesting. But I haven't had any problems with not having enough asteroids. Um, and that's only, this one requires Vulcanus anyway. And I guess you can get a tiny bit of calcite. Now, the real question is, can you get anywhere near enough calcite from space around Nalvis to, to supply Nalvis with calcite without having to come from Vulcanus? That's the real question about this one that I have. Um, but yeah, ca calcite from space is nice for sure. I'm just curious if it's enough. Um, Anywho, this seems to be working, despite all odds. Why is this not spoiling? Oh, it is. It feels like this should have spoiled multiple times over by now. Oh, I was in the tech tree. It's paused. Right, right, right. Well, this is kind of crazy, but we're, we're glabing it. Oh lordy Glaben. Oh no, this stopped. How did this stop? It was going so well. Why did you break again? The worst part is I don't even know what could have broken it because things were working properly for so long. I'm not even sure what would have... Was it my power outage? Ah, I bet it was when power was struggling. I bet that's what it was. Okay. That makes me less concerned. Because I think it was the power struggles that caused that. Okay, so we'll grab this. Restart our copper bacteria here. I really wish there was a freezer where you could just keep some of these things to restart the processes. Did math it, but Gleba orbit was 130. Well, Gleba orbit's gonna have asteroids though. Nalvis orbit has no asteroids. It only has the chunks that float around. So I'm curious if you, if you process everything into calcite, you reprocess all the other asteroid types into calcite, what you end up with. Now you have to make. I feel like this is a dumb question, but I'm just double checking. You have to make this on Glebo, right? Yes. Okay. I was like, could we could we just move the bioflux over to Navis and make it there? I guess the eggs have a short spoil time though. Yeah, these only last 20 minutes. Okay, so I think it's time to start making science. 
Um, no, no, it's time to make rockets. <laughs> That's what's next. Rockets, because without rockets, you can't send the science up to space. So that means we need plastic production. First, we double check our, our temperatures here. Temperatures are OK. I'm going to run the alarm if we go under 940 this time. Because we want to we make sure we hear that. Okay, so that's running plastic from Gleba. How do we do that? We need Bioflux and Yumako Mash. Of course, made in biochambers. I'm so tired of... Biochambers is like a step backwards in the game where you're like, okay, finally I have electricity. It's like going back to not having electricity. Because now you need nutrients everywhere. A nutrient, you can't just request nutrients because then they're going to spoil. Oh, goodness. It really is crazy. It really feels crazy. Alright, this is probably not enough space for this. But it's nice because I can get nutrients without having to do a lot of extra work, so I'm going to start with it right here. Let's try... Uh, and why can we make... Why do we need sulfur? I mean, is it just for completeness sake? Why do we need biosulfur? Because the low-density structure, we're going to be good to go with plastic. Oh, for the blue chips. Right, right, right. Blue chips need sulfuric. Duh. Um, and I guess rocket fuel needs oil. And the oil... No, 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 there's a different rocket fuel recipe. Jelly. Jelly fuel. Now, has anyone done the math? Is it Could it be better to make the sulfuric acid? You can't make, never mind. Um, I'm thinking petroleum. You can't make solid fuel from, yeah, yeah. We can't make light fuel from anything on Gleba. So Gleba doesn't have oil products then, right? That you can't do anything to, to kickstart any oil? I, I mean, you could make carbon, and then carbon you can... Uh, you can make coal with sulfur and carbon, and then you could use that coal to do coal liquefaction. So I guess you can. Um, you can do oil. It's probably horrible efficiency to turn carbon into coal just to do coal liquefaction. I'm sure it's better to do rocket fuel this way. But it is an option. I'm just saying. Just saying. Okay, uh, anyway, let's work on bioplastic. So we need Yumako Mash. That's coming along the mountain here. Um, output priority left. And then we do a Yumako Mash filter. Or actually, why don't I just run it along and then do this? And input priority left. I can grab the Yumako Mash from there. It just happens to be passing by. And then the bioflux, we can run over here. And I am going to do the strategy of... I'm also trying to figure out where to fit a beacon here. Because that makes a significant speed difference. Um, mm, 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 mm. Uh-oh. Attract a group of pentapods? Where? How? Why? Where are they? That achievement was an early warning. <gasps> they expanded! The freaks. Get out of here. 
You don't like your kind. What? Where is... How did they expand here? What on earth? Wow. They can expand really far. Oh, is it? Maybe it's this. Maybe this is the base. Is there a raft here? There we go. Okay, did, did that fix it? Um. Only a little bit. There still is a base. Must be a base sort of nearby. But yeah, they can expand really far. Huh. There's some, oh, you know, let me munch on a... Let me munch on a bioflux here so we can zoom around faster. Oop. Here's a big boy. It's okay. Our AP rounds actually do decent damage against it. Okay, well, did that actually help? Or not so much? It did. It did. There's still some danger in the northwest. <sighs> Which means I can't just leave Gleba by itself. I'm going to need a lot of laser turrets. Um, anyway, plastic's being produced. Yay. Mm. I'll do that. This. And spoilage can get on this belt, weirdly enough. We'll do that weird spoilage filter to an active fire. Okay. So there's plastic. This is so weird. All of this is so weird. I really like Gleba. I mean, it's definitely making me think different. We probably need to be done with the YouTube episode. We're an hour and seven minutes in. Oh my. This is still running. That's good. We're still making iron and copper. That's a positive. Um, things are backed up on most of the metallic type ingredients. And we just need to request stone. Stone brick for this guy. And then what else can we make in foundries? Just the LDS? Um, yes. And pipes, I guess. I don't think I'm going to automate belts here. That doesn't feel worth it. I do want to automate circuits, though. So... EMP basic mall. Let's get some of that going. Green circuit, green circuit, green circuit, green circuit, red circuit, red circuit. Maybe I move this down. We have room for beacons. This is gonna mess with my power generation too. I wish there was a way to get uranium here to do nuclear. Hmm. Power generation's kind of messy. I wonder if I should set up some sort of power generation farm. Also, does Yumako give more power than Jelly? Jelly Nut? Yumako Mash... 
is only one megajoule, so no. Bioflux is also not better than jelly, fuel-wise. So jelly seems to be the best fuel. Now what if we made rocket fuel? Would that be better? It's 100 megajoules. 30 jelly is only 30 megajoules. So this might be the way to do it. Ooh, we make rocket fuel from jelly. But then the uh, but then the problem is you don't just want to burn. I guess we could put a condition where we only burn rocket fuel if we need it. Because right now my heat exchangers are just eating all, or the heating towers are eating all of my stuff. He did the mash. He did the Yumako mash. He did the mash. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now please tell me I have EMPs. Looks like I don't. Please tell me you have EMPs. Ah, oh, thank God. All right. Bring me the goods. some more bots, bring me some roboports, bring me some belts, more substations. Uh, what about laser turrets? Did we bring laser turrets this time again? No, that must have been a one-time thing. Um, bummer. Drops more calcite just in case. And. Oh, you know what I need to do? We don't have a third. We need a new ship. We need a new ship. Ribbit. Uh. Uh. <sighs> Glebian Nightmare. That's what we're gonna call that. Um, okay, so that's automatically doing it. Cool. And we're basically gonna copy the Derpamu, because the Derpamu seems to be working fine. Probably overkill. It took the Derpamu like hours to build last time. So I probably shouldn't do it this way, but I am going to do it this way. Sue me. Um. So we'll just build the Glabian Nightmare here. It will do requests for construction. And we shall request these things. which I don't have the uncommon thrusters or crushers. But everything else should eventually figure itself out. Um, unless, do we not have uncommon solar panels figured out? Yeah, we'll just make some more solar. And then what's the best way to get more thrusters? Let's change you to be need you to be 300 make another 100 crushers why not you'll figure it out um i just i can't be bothered to do it the right way um so that process is going on now this now so as we finish out i say finish out we still have a lot to do on Gleba. but as we do the rest of what we need to do on Gleba, that will be the spacecraft that's going to carry packs back and forth will be getting figured and now the goal, so I probably make LDS next, because, well, we can. Um, I wanna make use of these, whatchamacallit, I probably only need two of these to be honest. Let's go fast. Like, even without any sort of speed boost, they're already at over one a second, which, how many science packs fit in one rocket? I really need to think about the rates here, which is interesting, because I don't normally have to do that. Um, science. Rocket capacity is 1,000. 
Okay. So, we don't need a ton of rockets to move the science packs into the rocket. So, if I want, for example, 200 packs a minute, I only need a fifth of a rocket per minute, which is nothing. Okay, so one, one a second is more than enough, is basically what I'm getting, getting at here. Um... So I could even do probably like a speed and an efficiency here. And do those cancel out? Uh, almost. It's plus 30% energy consumption for plus 50% speed, which is obviously a net, a uh, huge net positive. Um, I'll do this, do this. We'll go for uh, low density structure, less than 2,000. Really need to automate these. Until we do. I also need to be done with this YouTube episode because we are an hour and 16 minutes in. There's just so much to do. Always, always so much to do. Um, over. Okay. There's 150. And I do need more Lodger Bots here. That's why I dropped a bunch from the space platform. So we can get all that done. Oh my, okay, that's a little much. I don't need all of it right now, please. Thank you. Where did all these Pentapod eggs come from? I don't know. But I should probably throw them in a heating tower. Oh, from hunting. Yeah, every time I go kill pentapods, I need to remember I now have a bunch of random eggs in my inventory. Okay, so LDS is done, so that's one of the three rocket components. And the EMPs are still... Oh, oh right, it's not the unknown. There we go. There we go. And I think in the interest of not having absurd power requirements, I really need these efficiencies. Let me set these to be green circuit less than, let's go for 3,000. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Cool. Alright, so green circuits on Gleba are done. All the foundry stuff on Gleba is done. Take a screenshot of that for the episode. Yeah, for those of you watching from future YouTube, as always, thank you for watching. Let me know what you guys think about the Glabian nightmare that we are currently in. I'm still really enjoying it, but boy, is it crazy. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode.